Well, folks, there is no doubt in my mind that at least quite a few batches of this camera, the DJI Nano, have overheating problems. And what I've come to recognize is there's a lot of discrepancy in terms of when it overheats, if it overheats, yada, yada, yada. It's like a Reddit forum out there. But I have put together some testings that I did uh, that I think will hopefully help shed some light on it. I would love to say it's going to you know, give you clarity. It probably won't. Uh, but I do want to report back because you guys did a awesome job. I asked you guys for data points. You shot them back. I said, look, bro, if you do a test, let me know what you're finding out. Uh, just so that I can get some data points to honestly get back to DJI. I don't, I have no affiliation to them. Although I do think they kind of found out that I have a YouTube channel um, somehow. And uh, they are being very attentive, which uh, great. Listen, I love that. And and I'm, I'm happy to help provide them with those data points. So first, let's, let's talk about what they sent me and response to my uh, overheating issues and they gave me this response now again they've been highly engaged with me there's been quite more talk back and forth but this was their standard response to me and they said you should shoot statically again unacceptable to me because i don't think an action camera is meant to shoot static no shame if you do i do at times but look this thing is designed to move around uh, set the screen to turn off after 15 seconds yada 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 set the beat bit rate to standard mode uh, that's not really cool to me because I didn't buy it for the standard mode. I bought it for the highest bit rate. Uh, select normal 8-bit color profile. Uh, not good either because I didn't buy it for 8-bit. I bought it for 10-bit normal color profile and oh yeah, 10-bit log. Enable endurance mode. Shoot in, the ambi in ambient temperatures. Uh, shooting ambient temperatures between 0 degrees and 40 degrees Celsius. The optimal being 25 degrees Celsius. So 0 to 40 for those of us in the States, that's 32 degrees or freezing and then 40 is about 104 degrees fahrenheit and then 25 c is about 77 degrees now this is interesting to me especially here in montana because we are well below zero c or 32 degree fahrenheit for most of the winter so now i'm starting to realize like more than likely it's not going to work in the colder temperatures either um, so that means i'm not gonna be able to snowboard with this thing i'm not gonna be able to cross-country ski with this thing so i think you guys need to be aware of that especially if you're in an alpine environment and there's another point here i'll make later about the alpine environment too uh, so those are kind of eye-opening to me and again 77 is the optimal shooting okay that's fine um, again what if it's 99 for you and the sun's beating down so it is what it is then they recommended of course you know charging this and letting it cool and then the last thing which was a super big bummer to me which is they said you probably shouldn't connect this either and again all these connections are going to generate heat and processing so i use the osmo app a lot and the reason i use it is because i can use things like histograms on there i can get overexposure warnings and it's just a bigger screen for you to me to make sure things are framed up or uh, you know again taking a shot even if i'm moving i'll look around the environment make all my tweaks on the phone and i know it's got it can be locked in so that was a big bummer for me as well so I, I think a lot of these things are i get it they're working on it i think dji does a phenomenal job probably the best in terms of updating with firmware uh, but i just don't know if they're going to be able to do enough with firmware it remains to be seen i also recognize there is a huge discrepancy because i think a lot of folks are testing this just statically they're just hitting record putting it on their desk and going through the different frame rates and saying yeah you know some rare folks i've heard have said hey the battery ran out before it overheated uh, and then some folks are saying i'm getting 40 50 60 minutes out of it before it overheats well again we're, we're, we're dealing with quite a different few different variables you know how hot was it in the testing environment was there any airflow things like that so that's always going to be a little bit off because we're you know, we're not being really scientific here right we're each going to have our own different variables so i went ahead and tested it myself and i got 4k 30 frames per second i got 42 minutes and then at 4k 60 i got 20 minutes and then at 4k 120 i got seven minutes and that was all before it completely shut down. Now, I will mention that I was shooting statically with stabilization on. I'll tell you why here in a minute. And then also shooting in 10-bit color profile as well as the high, highest bit rate. They recommended not to use those things. But I believe, and I'm sorry, that we should hold them kind of accountable to what they advertised. And those are basically the reasons why I bought this camera. Such a vast difference between what I was getting out in the field. Now, if you didn't see that video, I went out and kind of filmed this flower garden, picking some flowers, and it was 70 degrees, but it was really, really intense sun. It was beating down. 
and I was able to get eight minutes before it overheated. And then I was only able to like let it rest for a minute or two and then it would only go for like one or two minutes. 4K 30, again, 10 bit and high bit rate. Uh, and that was my experience there as well as other places. And then I went to the store and I took this thing and I put it right on my dashboard with st stabilization on, put the suction cup on, and it was jostling around. The sun was beating into the windscreen. Inside the car was around 70 as well. It overheated in eight minutes again. So for me, I started to think maybe it has something to do with the sun, obviously, but it also has something to do with stabilization. Obviously with digital stabilization, that's gonna create some heat when it's trying to process that image and smooth everything out internal to the camera. So I think that creates a lot more heat than folks are really understanding or letting on. So if you have a static shot, it's not even with stability on, it's not working, it's not generating that heat. Well, as soon as you start moving, well, yeah, it's, it's, it has a good chance of probably overheating if it hits that threshold. The big point I wanted to make about this is it's going to be all over the board. I really do think it really depends on the environment you're shooting in. You know, is there airflow, for example? I think rollers, I think, you know, anybody who flies a drone and puts this on the front, if there's airflow, you're not gonna have a problem. If you're outside and there's wind and some breeze, whatever, I don't think you're gonna have a problem. But if you're outside and it is direct sun, and in my case, like we're up high, I think that's where things start to get hot and then you add on st stabilization to it, starts to get real hot and it shuts down. All those things go into kind of this complex algorithm, if you will, and, and it will probably overheat at some time. So similar to your static tests, it's all just gonna depend on the environment. And that is what really bothers me because I have very variable conditions here in Montana. I already mentioned that, you know, if I'm only getting zero to 40 C out of this, zero degrees, well, it's below zero degrees Celsius here for four or five months, you know, for an average. Uh, so, you know, again, keep that in mind. That's where we stand. That's kind of the state of the union of the DJI Nano. And I've come to the conclusion that unfortunately, I'm probably gonna be sending this back. I just, again, need that reliability to be able to chuck this into my bag, pull it out in automatic, not have to worry about the conditions or if it's too bright a sun and shoot with this thing. I can do that with other action cameras. There are some other options out there. And Insta360 is one. Insta360 Go series or the new Ultra is one. Those don't have any overheating problems, but they also don't have things like 10 bit color. They don't have things like a high bit rate. Uh, so again, they won't have all the upper end features that I was really looking forward about this, but right now I can't recommend it. I am going to do one more trip with it in two days. I'm going on a big uh, fly fishing float uh, for streamer fishing. It's fall here. So it's that time. And I'll try to put this through some more paces. I'll come back and report on it. Just wait right now. As, as much as it pains me to say that I'm not trying to hurt the company because at the end of the day, I love the film that this makes. I think the video is great. Form factor is phenomenal and there's really cool things you can do with this. Uh, so there are some compelling reasons, but taking away things like 10 bit, you know, maybe that works itself out. Maybe they figure out it is stabilization and they back that down a little bit, but I have 30 days to return it and well, it's headed back. Anyways, I hope this update helped. My name's Hill Phantom. I'll see you next time.